Welcome to the Double L Show, and we're here with another special guest. So, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Courtney Hansen. So, I'll get started. And this was like the question, like that I was like, I always wonder what made you move to Nashville. What made me move to Nashville? Um, I was doing uh, country radio. <laughs> I was actually on a morning show, um, and that was a it was a side hustle gig, and I loved it, and I was doing traffic and um, I started to meet country artists and just kind of fell in love with the city of Nashville as I came down to visit a lot. Um, and there were a few that came through and I just said, hey, if you ever need anybody for a music video, I'm an actress. So I'd love to come down and be a part of it or audition if there's auditions. Um, and interestingly enough, my husband was the one that said, hey, what are you doing next week? when he came to be a guest on the show, because it just so happened that he was um, shooting a music video the following week and their leading lady had dropped out at the last minute and they were trying to cast a new, a new female lead and um, everything just came together. And I came down to shoot the video. And from there, I always knew I love Nashville. Um, I, I grew up in Iowa, which is in the Midwest and it's, um, it's very, uh, family oriented. It's a great place to grow up. Um, there's a lot of green, you know, there's cities, but it's not like moving to a big city like LA or New York. Um, so it always, Nashville always kind of felt like home anyway. And when I had the opportunity and I saw work kind of developing here, I thought I want to give it a chance. And so I just, I just decided to make the move. That's like pretty bold. Like, I don't think I could ever think about doing that. A lot of people around do that now. They just like, just take off and go wherever. But mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's something that I'd ever be bold it's, enough to do. It's hard. It's a big thing, especially um, especially when you grow up someplace. I mean, I lived there my entire life and I've never um, lived anywhere else. And my whole family lives back in Iowa, pretty much. My mom and dad are still there and I'm very close with my mom. So it was... It was a big decision, but um, I also felt led here. Um, I don't know what your beliefs are, but in in more of a spiritual way, I felt like God was leading me here for some reason, and I just needed to follow that instinct. And it turned out very well. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, like, yeah it's paid off. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I feel like spiritually, you always get led in the right direction eventually, even if it takes a long time. Yes, exactly. Exactly. What is one place you recommend for people? One place? Yeah, like if someone was to visit, where would you recommend to go? Oh, you know what? I always tell people, there's so many, of course, Nashville, and it's growing all the time. Um, and our show is a big <laughs> reason for that. But um, if you're looking for a fun place to eat, I always tell people to go to a place called the Funky Griddle. And it's, I, I don't know why, it's just kind of a silly little place and it's, it's really cute, really fun, has a fun vibe. It's um, more of a breakfasty lunch place where you can go and you make your own food on a griddle at your table. And it's in this little house. It's like a little cottage and they've decorated it and painted it really nice. And it's just a cool vibe. So if you're looking for food, that's a that's a fun spot to check out for sure. I wish we but had always... things like that. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. sounds so good. It is. It is. It's. It was one of my favorites when I would come visit here. Um, aside from a restaurant, sadly, that's no longer here. It was a sushi place that I loved. I would always tell people that, but yeah, Funky Griddle was always a place to stop. Yeah, for sure. How often do you bump into country singers? Cause I feel like there must be like a big network. <laughs> they, you know, what's funny. I haven't for a little while, but, um, I live in a suburb that's about 20 minutes from downtown called Hendersonville. And, um, there are quite a few people who live out here, songwriters and country singers. Um, and there's a lot more that live on the South side of, of downtown basically. Um, and when I first moved to town, that's kind of where I was living. And I, I saw Martina McBride in target, which is, I'm not sure if you guys know what target is, but it's like, yeah. a, you know, yeah. department. um, I saw her just checking out greeting cards one time and had to do a double take like, Whoa, that's, really Martina just standing there I think she was with her daughter or something um um but Naomi uh, Naomi Judd was another one that I saw 
That's why everybody thinks that they need to go to Target, but she was also a Target <laughs> in the checkout line. So I saw her. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. You, it, it's just, you know, that's where everybody's here. So you kind of just see people in passing and it's like, oh yeah, we, this is where we all live. So it's cool. Okay. I kind of wish it was more like that here. <laughs> I yeah, mean, that would yeah. be perfect. Just nip down to the supermarket. No, hello, Benedict yeah. Cumberbatch or whatever. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. Would you say that Nashville is like the music Hollywood? Yes, for sure. Yes. We're the music capital of the country. So the country music capital of the country. So yeah, definitely it is. Um, and and also it's starting this region is starting to become a new LA actually they call it that all the time Atlanta as well um things are moving away from California quite a bit and coming in our direction which is great so we're getting the country music side of it and also um the uh the tv and film industry as well that is so cool like I know. we love our filmmaking so much I would rather move to Nashville than LA like honestly yeah, I think it's the same as well. I've always wanted to just go. Yeah, have maybe. you ever visited here? I've never been out of no. Europe. <laughs> I'd like to you have well. to. You have to. You have to make it a point to come visit for sure. Yeah, I've got like a bucket list of everywhere that I want to go, and I don't know if I'll ever get through it all. Well, that's good to have a list, though. That's awesome. Yeah. How did the audition process go for Nashville? Did you audition initially for Emily? I, yes. And she was a nameless character. Um, when the auditions happened, it was through, through my agent here in town. And, um, at that time we were doing more in-person auditions. Now it's gone kind of by the wayside and it's all self tapes, but, um, still in person. So we met with the casting director, um, first and did the primary audition. And then I was called back and um, at this time, the character was um, just assistant, personal assistant to Juliet Barnes. And um, so the second audition, the callback, I auditioned in front of RJ Cutler and Callie Curry, uh, who I did not know at the time I, that's who they were, thank God, because I think I probably would have been too nervous to speak. <laughs> Those are some heavy hitters. Of course, Callie, you know, directed the show and is an Oscar winner from Thelma and Louise and um she's just outstanding. And, uh, so I did that call back and it, I felt like it went well. Um, interestingly, when I was there in the waiting room to go back for the callback, Hayden, um, happened to come in for something that they were doing for pre-production. And I saw her walk through and I've always been a huge fan, um, ever since her time on guiding light, actually, cause my mom was a huge soap opera fan. And so I had seen her on that and, Heroes was another show that I loved her on. So I was already a huge fan and it was just all very surreal to be auditioning for something so big. And we didn't exactly know at the time how big it was going to be, but um, it was interesting. And to look around the room and see, you know, you go into these audition rooms, I'm sure you, you've you had experience with it where there's people that look just like you because that's what they're, they're looking for. They're looking for a certain type. Um, so yeah, it was just, I'll never forget. I'll never forget it. It was, it was an interesting experience. So from there, um, it, it came down to actually me between me and one other girl. Um, and obviously they went with me, thank goodness that they did. <laughs> um, but that was, that was for the pilot. So that initial audition was to go shoot the pilot. Yeah. Yes. I honestly, like I've never loved a show so much. Like it changed my life. Like I would never have ever played ukulele I would never have wrote my own music again if it wasn't for the show and I've literally got my uke right there because I was playing it beforehand oh wow that means so much to know that's so wonderful yeah so I, I literally recorded my first song like last week and it was just surreal congratulations that's Thanks. wonderful that's wonderful so you're playing country music yeah and it's like the least like people don't know what country music is here like they just yeah. they just think it's a stereotype and it's like so far from that it's all about like empowered like words and just straight from the heart songs yeah and stories yes very much storytelling mm -hmm. yes yeah so linked on to that do you sing or play an instrument <laughs> <laughs> I do not I do not <laughs> And that's kind of one thing that I was 
worried about with the show because I knew obviously what it was about and then it involves singing and, and all that and playing instruments and um thankfully they had a spot for me I don't sing I don't play anything I've danced my entire life um I've been a, a dance instructor I've danced um tap ballet hip-hop jazz since I was a little kid um been on numerous dance teams but I never considered myself a good enough singer to give that a shot. Um, my husband does that. <laughs> He's a singer songwriter. So I leave that to him and he plays guitar and piano and everything else. Um, but no, to answer your question, I wish I did. <laughs> did you ever discuss potential storylines and character developments? I did not. Um, that was not really up to us, I guess. It's, we have huge writing teams that take care of all that stuff, but um, there were rumors that you'd hear about different things happening. And I always was praying and hoping that my character wouldn't become romantically involved with some other lead character because then it would eventually end and I would be gone. Um, there was one, there was one discussion of Emily and Avery actually getting together um, and they changed their minds because they liked Emily so much and they didn't want her to go away. <laughs> That's literally part of my next question as well. Has, you could just, there was so much chemistry there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it could have totally gone that way. Um, yeah, when they had the storyline where Juliet was kind of falling off of her rocker and um, and I was connecting more with Avery and and the baby and everything um, and Cadence. Yeah, they could have, they could have definitely, I thought for a minute it was gonna go that way, but thankfully we, we stayed away from that. <laughs> What is it like being on a show from start to finish, essentially? So wonderful. It was so wonderful. Um, because we became a family and it would have been very difficult to leave that family early. Um, we you form these bonds and I was not um, a regular, I was not a regular character on the show. You know, I was... Um, I was just a guest star for the entire time. And, and again, I thank my lucky stars and God that, that they kept me on the entire time because they didn't have to. Um, but myself and the character, Glenn, who's my friend, Ed Amatrudo, who lives down the street actually. And, um, and Bucky, we all were locals that were hired in Nashville and stayed on for the entire time. And just were just, were so lucky to be a part of that family and, um, and write it out for the long haul. It was, it was amazing. How did Emily not quit after dealing with so much trauma and confrontation <laughs> from Juliet? I got that question so much. Um, she just, I think she was the only one that could really see past her crap, you know, like she just saw through to the person, to the human that Juliet was, even though she was so, um, so messed up in so many ways um and just couldn't get herself together I think Emily really saw through that and 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 loved her for who she was and just was was strong enough to say she doesn't really mean what she does half the time and doesn't mean what she says she I know she cares about me and I'm gonna stick with her because I truly care about her as a friend not just an employer so I think that's I think that's why I think Emily was the only one that could see past her exterior yeah definitely I mean there's so many like challenging times of like throwing things and I'm just like wow like that's yes yeah. scary <laughs> yeah I mean Luminelle Juliet could be in a baseball player for all the things she flows oh yeah oh yeah oh the and my favorite was the cake do y'all remember the cake at her baby shower that yeah. was my favorite yes uh, <laughs> and to shoot that scene was amazing but it was yeah that was probably my favorite thing that she threw yeah because she's pregnant you know eight months pregnant on the show and they're throwing a cake <laughs> what a waste of cake I know. exactly <laughs> exactly that's making us so hungry <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite song oh my gosh I had so many songs you're putting me on the spot um and you know what's funny is that I rarely knew the names of them. Give me some time to think about it because I can't remember. I mean, obviously the big our big ending song was very I, meaningful. A life that's good. 
Yes. It's one of the only ones I can play on uke still. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. It was the first it's- one I learned. <sighs> that's awesome. It's a beautiful, it's just a beautiful song with a beautiful message and the way that they used it at the end to just tie it all together between, um, between show and real life was just, it was so touching. So I I guess that would be the one. Like, I just remember when that scene aired and nobody wanted to enter the room because I was bawling my eyes out that much. Lee hasn't got to it yet because he's still on season four. So yeah. Oh my goodness, Lee, you have to keep going. I'm on episode 10 season four and it's just nonstop drama and I, I love it. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> well, good. And there's more to come. So just keep with it. <laughs> yeah. He already knows the big spoilers. Yeah. I okay. found that out last yeah. year before I started watching the show. Okay. All right. So you'll probably still yeah. cry. The biggest probably. one coming in season five. Yeah. I'm nearly on five, I think, again. Oh, I don't even want to know. What was your favorite storyline? My favorite storyline was. I lo- okay, I have a couple because I loved after Cadence was born. I definitely loved the storyline with Avery, and because Emily got to express more of her self um, and be involved a little bit more, I was able to have a little bit more range and some more some more things to do and give Emily a little bit more life with that storyline. Um, but also when Juliet was. <laughs> One of my favorite episodes, I believe it's season three, nine, episode nine, when she's stalking Avery at the festival. Yeah. That will forever, because I love comedy, and that will forever go down as one of the most fun episodes to shoot. So that that storyline revolving around that where she, you know, we're in the car and she's like, I'm just going to follow him and saying she's not stalking him. And I'm like, yeah, it is. What are you talking about? I really felt like they were finally like showing their friendship, not just that employer employee uh, relationship. I felt like they were finally showing how they, Emily and Juliet work with each other and kind of, you know, give each other, give each other crap, I guess to say at least yeah favorite character favorite character I mean Emily of course um (laughs) but other than her oh gosh so I mean they're all great for so many reasons I love Deacon I love the way that they where they took him and his different um his different storylines to show um the depth of his character um I do love, I, I loved Juliet. I loved Avery's character. I mean, there's so many things. There's so many different ones that I liked. Yeah, it's hard to pinpoint. And obviously with with Emily and, and, and the scenes that I worked on, I was kind of in one storyline or what, not storyline, but one um, branch of the whole tree, if you know what I mean. Like I wasn't that involved in Scarlet's or Gunner's all that much, but um I did. I did enjoy them. And I enjoyed the, the, the three men and a, and a baby stuff where those three guys were living together and Cadence was there. And, um, yeah, they everybody, every, all of them were just so much fun to follow their storylines. Yeah. Yeah. It's like so rare now to get such developed characters as well. Yeah. Yeah, really. I mean, and, and it was great that we had we had six seasons because we did have so many chances to explore the characters and they they really, you know, the, our writers were great in that and they they gave everybody opportunities to dig deeper. Do you keep in touch with the cast? I have some. Um, definitely Ed. Like I said, he lives five minutes from me. So we we work together quite a bit on self tapes and and auditions and and talk and and vent to each other about the industry and um and hang out and do I do different things together um he's he's like a big brother to me I love Ed um and then um Chip who of course was Deacon he he's still in town he doesn't live very close to me but he does play shows around town occasionally and um does a fundraiser for his um his daughter essentially who had leukemia um and they do a fundraiser every year um so I've I've talked to him here and there but 
it's sad. That's one, that's one hard part about a show like that ending is everybody kind of has to go their own separate ways. You're not seeing everybody as much. You're not in the same, in the same city for the most part. So yeah, that's, that's been kind of hard to adjust to not talking to everybody. A lot of the crew also, I, I talked to, I've got a wonderful makeup artist that I still see. She, she and I do photo shoots together quite a bit. And, um, we, that's another part of that family. It's not just who you guys see on, on screen. It's that crew. We had so many, I mean, a crew of, of hundreds and they were all wonderful people. And, um, I do miss them dearly, the ones that I don't see, but obviously there's social media to keep up with them as well. So that's nice. Yeah. That's one of the best things about social media. The world is a lot closer now. Exactly. Yes, for sure. How much of the show have you actually watched back? If so, do you find it yourself like it's too hard to watch essentially? <laughs> like I can't watch um, myself back. There, yes, there it's, it's hard. I'm very critical of myself as I feel like a lot of actors are. Um, um, but then a lot of it, especially starting at the beginning, it's fun to go back and just say, we had such an awesome show. It really was, it really was a quality, great show. And I'm so proud to have been a part of it. Um, and I do, I do enjoy going back and watching it again and reliving some of those things because what's, what's fun aside from watching, you know, the actual story, uh, um, evolve throughout the episodes is also thinking back to shooting it and thinking back to those memories and everything that we, we went through while we were shooting and all the fun stuff and extra things that people don't know about. So I do, I do like to go back and watch it. Yeah. A lot goes on behind the scenes and a lot of people don't know. Yes. It's sometimes yes. just so fun. Yes, it is. And that's that's a, that's a cool memory for, for cast and crew to have that you can carry that through your life after you have those experiences. So it's great. I don't know if you'd want to talk about the next topic, but it's like I noticed that you've done quite a lot of posts on mental health and anxiety. So I don't know if you'd want to go into that. Post oh, um, I can. Yeah. I'm just um I'm just all about you know, being healthy and, um, taking care of yourself. And that's not just physically, it's mentally as well. And I think so much of the things we see, um, in media and, um, on social media are, are inaccurate and they are um, self-deprecating and it's not truth. Um, you know, we see people, influencers and things like that, that, that are influencing our kids and, that's not real. And so I try with, with posts that I make, I just try to be as positive. I'm a very positive person overall. And I just, I, I have two little kids. I have a five-year-old and a nine-year-old and they're both boys. Um, so I don't have the female thing. Um, but I just want them to grow up feeling confident about who they are and being true to themselves and not, and, and knowing that what they see, um, what they see in media and social media is not necessarily reality and to, and to just focus on what's in front of them and priorities and things that, you know, that can keep their minds healthy and strong and confident. Um, because, you know, suicide awareness is, is so important. Um, and I just want them to always, always feel strong mentally. Yeah. No matter what is thrown at them. Yeah, it's so important. Like I'm trying to do the same because I've had the probably the worst two years of my life and I've had practically five years taken off us from like bad trauma and just the following effects of trauma. So I'm yeah. hopefully coming out the other side, but I'm still trying to do the same because it's just like everything you see on social media now, you're just like, is that real or is that fake? But most of the time, a lot of it is just fake and just for yeah. sure to make everybody else feel like bad about themselves. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's one thing that I, I have a very hard time with when I do, when I post on social media is making sure that not a hard time. It's just, it's a very, it's something I concentrate on. It's just making sure that it's real and that it's true and that it's, it's positive and people know that they're worthy of their time on this earth, no matter what. Um, and that they're important, even if, social media doesn't say so. Cause that's not the end all be all. Um, 
you are worthy of being here and you are important to people and it doesn't have to be posted all over social media to feel that way and to know that so yeah just, like from the other perspective it's kind of hard to accept them kind of things because if you get to a certain amount of like bad you get so used to it that you can't accept the good and you always yeah. question if it's actually real or a people lying like it's just it's it's very hard it is it's very hard it's very hard to decipher and to navigate your way through all of that and to focus on the good um and trust me I know coming from an industry that's all about that kind of the the physical perception and that what's what you see from the outside and um yeah it's 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 hard to remind yourself every day that I am, I am important and I am loved and I, you know, I deserve to be here and no one's going to tell me differently because I know who I am. I guess I, I think that's the most important thing is to remember who you are and remember, you know, what you want out of your life and to go for your, your dreams and your goals and to kind of shut all of the negativity out. Yeah. Definitely, like a hundred percent, like support that. Does Lee have anything to add? I feel like he does. <laughs> I don't. I mean, no. It's just, I agree with everything you say. Like for some people, when it comes to mental health, they don't really like talk about it, and it's like understandable because some people do like to think, "Oh, if I talk about it, I'm just going to be a burden on someone else." And it's like, well, some people, if they if they say that, then they're not really like your friends are you but if you've got people who are like no like tell us your issues like I I'm 100% there and that's the kind of people you need to surround yourself with like I remember hearing a quote that I probably I think you would have heard I'm not quite sure but it was um I would rather hear your problems than the eulogy at your funeral yes yeah 100% yeah I think you you have to find those people that that are the good, that are the supporters that are truly there for you. And just it's around yourself with those people, even if it's only a couple, you know, I don't have that many tight knit friends around me because I'm very picky about who I surround myself with. And, um, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to the negativity. I've fallen into that trap before. I know I, everybody does. I think where you, you get so down on yourself because of what you're hearing and what you think, um, is really truth when for the most part, this is what I teach my kids. Everybody is worried about themselves for the most part. They're not looking, they're all looking out for number one, right. For the most part. So if you hear somebody say something, they're just, they're concentrating on themselves. Don't even listen, you know, like focus on who you are, know your worth and find those people that you can connect with and talk to, and that will support you and be positive. 100%. Yeah. So the next topic is career because you've been like, you've done so much, like in such a variety as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> you've been in our position and all that and presented, which do you have a preference of like presenting, acting, dancing? Um, yeah. Honestly, being a host is, is fun. Um, and and I enjoy it. Interviewing people terrifies me. <laughs> I'll let you know a little secret. It scares me to death um, because I'm kind of a shy person, which is, you, you wouldn't think so in this, in this industry again, but I am, I've always been kind of a shy person. So it's hard for me to break out through that shell and, and do something like that. Um, but I did really enjoy working for CMT when I was doing more hosting um, and correspondent work. In a lot of those cases, I was reading somebody else's words, which was great because that's what I do like. I do like acting. I like to play a different character. I like, um, I like to just immerse myself in someone else. Um, it's just, I, it's fun for me. It's just so interesting and. Um, and then having another person's words to use with that is just, it's my passion. So, um, yeah, so definitely, definitely acting. I grew up acting in the theater. I went to school for theater. Um, that's what I hold a degree in and I enjoy that. Although I don't get to do that as much anymore with my kids. Um, 
just a lot of time commitment while they're little, I'm sure I'll get back to it, but, um, but yeah, screen is next best thing. And I love, I love just playing characters, but I, I do like hosting as well. Just not quite as much. (laughs) Yeah. We were kind of scared. I think I was more scared of hosting because I used to not really see a thing and now I see a lot. Yeah. That's like switched up. Yeah. That's great. It's very scary interviewing though. I agree with that. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I mean, at the start, it can be, but once you get into a rhythm, it's it's fine. Yeah, absolutely. If you can get it's, and you never know what you're gonna get when you're interviewing someone. I I had very a few very uncomfortable interviews um, at CMT, and a lot of times it's in in those situations it was hard because you didn't have long, and you had producers saying these are the things we need to ask them, this is what we need to talk about, but you also can't have a normal conversation with somebody. Because because we don't want that in between dialogue, you know, on camera, it's got to be short, it's got to be fast. And it so it would feel awkward, because you're having to ask particular questions and get to everything that they want you to ask without having a natural organic conversation. And I think that's what made it so hard is because I wanted I wanted to laugh at somebody, somebody's joke or um, relate to them and go off on a different tangent a little bit where I couldn't. Um, so there were some uncomfortable ones. Um, one in particular was great. And I, she was probably my favorite to interview. And that was Kelly Clarkson because she was so natural and just used to everything, um, all, you know, how it all worked. And she was ready to talk to anybody and just somebody that was just easy to sit down and start a conversation with. Um, and those were fun. Those were super fun. Yeah. But yeah. It can be very intimidating, especially when you're looking at like huge stars talking to people. Yeah. <laughs> What's your reaction when you fa- like when you find out who you were interviewing and stuff? Because our reactions, we like freak out because we're like, <laughs> what is this? Like, why is this happening? Yeah, yeah, it's, a yeah. Mini, it's a mini party when we find those. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a bit of like, Oh my, I'm so excited, but I'm also terrified at the same time. And I'm like going to work myself up until I have to talk to them kind of a thing. Um, I know like who was one of Carrie Underwood was, was scary to me, but one thing, because I knew she was a tough interview. Um, but one good thing with that was she had her in the interview that I did, she had her, um, hairstylist with her and it was kind of a joint interview between the two of them about this salon. And I knew it was going to be really fast. Um, so that kind of helped Jennifer Lopez (laughs) was another one. We were American Idol was, was, um, shooting an episode in town. And so we had to go over and, and interview them as like everybody, as they were coming out, all the hosts or uh, the hosts and the judges, Um, and Harry Connick Jr. is one of my most favorite people ever. Um, and I just love, I love his music and I think he's just, he just seems like such a wonderful person and he was in that line. So I was dying to get to meet him. So that was more of like, I'm super excited. I'm, I'm not as terrified. I'm really excited to meet him, you know? Um, so yeah, yeah. It's just, I think a little bit of both. It just depends on the person that you're going to interview. Definitely. Our reactions always vary, but sometimes we're just like full on celebrating. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think drama school is the best route into the industry or networking with filmmakers? Honestly, if you go to the right place, if you're in the right school, that networking will come hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Um, I went a different route because I don't do anything traditionally (laughs) ever in life. Um, I do it the hard hard way, but I think if you have the chance to go to a major um, film school or, or theater school, that's the, that's a good route to take because you will network um, as a byproduct of that. Um, That will just come because, you know, obviously those people want to see what the up and coming kids or adults are are doing and who's who's a standout and they want to they want to talk to people coming out of those those major schools um but if you don't have the chance to do that then obviously networking is going to be is going to be another key component to it and I'm t- <laughs> I'm terrible at networking um but it is it's a it's a necessary evil yeah for sure yes 
all the times I've networked I was just like standing awkward I just didn't want to say to anyone <laughs> yeah to, yeah it goes for me it goes back to that whole I'm shy thing I'm an introvert and I don't I don't do well in those kind of social <laughs> situations same well, I'm, I'm the same I, it's just the same. scary yeah. Yeah. you just don't yeah. know what people are thinking either yeah, 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 you can't read. It's very hard to read people a lot of the times. And then you go back to the whole thing we were talking about earlier as well, where they're all feeling the same thing that you are. So I would always try to tell myself, everybody's in the same boat. We're all, you know, we're all trying to do the same thing here. And they're probably feeling the same thing that I'm feeling right now. So I need to just let go and stop being so nervous about it. What's your favorite style of dance? Because I've done quite a lot of dancing, but mostly self-taught. Yes, Okay. Um, I think hip hop would probably be my favorite, um, just in general. I know there's a lot of different subdivisions of hip hop, but yeah, I think that's been the most fun. Um, hey, tap is a close second though. I do. I've always loved to tap dance. Um, and I miss it because there's not a whole lot of adult tap classes that I can take, but yeah. Yeah. I've never done either of them. I just, yeah, but then I've just <laughs> never got to that point. Yeah. I would have loved to, but like it would have been just amazing because it's just so free in a dance. I just, I don't know why, but it just is. The only you dance now I've done mind. is musical theatre. Everything had to be choreographed. I couldn't make it up. I was like, you need to tell me what to do. I'm useless at this. <laughs> well, that makes it easier. Yes, choreography definitely helps. <laughs> make it easier. That's what I, I wish that I would have been able to sing for that reason because I love musical theatre. So I'm envious of that. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. yeah. I miss singing in musical theater a bit, like just a tiny bit. It was yes. just so fun. Mm. It's so fun. It was really fun. good. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like people either love it or they hate it. Yeah. <laughs> you just hate musical theater and I can't, I can't understand it. I don't know. I don't yeah. mind when they people break out in songs in a show. It doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> yeah, I feel like because sometimes people are forced into it and they don't like being forced into things, so they're, they're like, no, nah, I hate this. I'm never going to do it again. Yeah, that could be for sure. Yeah. Have you ever tried combining dance and modeling for photo shoots? Um, no, not exactly. Um, no, I don't think so. I'm trying to think back to anything. I'm just goofy at photo shoots, photo shoots again. Like I'm just, I'm not, I'm just a, like a silly person. So anytime I do a photo shoot, I can't, I can't not be silly no matter what. Yeah. So if I'm dancing for that, it's probably because I'm being silly. Yeah. I, I've done quite a f few photo shoots and one of them, I just put music on and start dancing and all the shots just come out like so weird, but also really cool at the same time. Yeah. 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 That would, yeah, I can see that. Uh, what's your advice to those starting out in the industry? Um, don't listen to anyone on the outside telling you that you can't do it. Don't listen to anybody saying, oh, it's really hard. You know, um, that's not followed up with, but you can do it but anything is possible. Um, and just, you just work hard and, and again, stay true to yourself and stay true to the person that, um, I guess it's the same thing. Just stay true to who you are and don't lose yourself in an industry that can be so cruel and, and full of rejection. Um, and just know that that's a big part of it. Um, being rejected is all part of the game and it's totally natural and it's, it's, you have to have a thick skin to get through that part of it, but just continue on with what you want to do and remember why you're in the industry and where, why you did it to begin with. Um, yeah, I guess those are, those are the biggest things and just keep practicing your craft, you know, um, no matter, no matter what. And sometimes it can be just observing it can be as simple as observing and, and, you know, like watching a movie and really focusing if you're, if you're focusing on the acting component of it, focusing on people that you really like and how they do things and pull bits from, from everywhere, because that you can develop your own style that way. So, yeah. My last question before we move on, Elise, can I get a follow back? Cause he was rubbing it in my face. Yes. Yes. <laughs> of course. I'll follow back. <laughs> It was just like, I just got to follow. And I'm like, wait, you got to follow. 
And then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna fall. <laughs> yeah, it's a car. I will. You know what? I could probably get on my phone right now. I've got it right here. I thought I already did. No. I'm oh, sorry, Lola. It's fine. I felt so yeah. lucky when it popped up. I was like, yes. <laughs> Look at you throwing it in her face. Why can't I get <laughs> so terrible with Instagram again? Why can't I just go to your message and get to your profile? What's up with that? If you like go on there. the message and then. There it is. There. You got it. Woo. There? all right yeah. i literally put a bet on at the start of the year that i can get as many followers as possible so <laughs> it's going pretty well so far good good luck yes okay, your turn <laughs> right um gonna start off with the question i've always wanted to ask people so what would your dream role be my dream role um something I mean, I don't have any particular character in mind. Um, exactly. Something that's completely different than who I am as a person and something, someone who has a backstory that is so deep that it takes an entire show to figure out. Um, yeah, I just, I love the meaty roles where you, you know, I, I love comedy but I also love the dramatic roles where you're, you know, you have so much to explore. So yeah, someone like that for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, how do you prepare for a role? Um, it depends. It depends on what it is. Um, theatrically, there's a obviously a, so much more of a process than mm. um, than for film and TV. Film and TV when um, when you're shooting, it's evolving constantly, especially when you're episodic and you're um, not knowing what's going to happen in the next episode. So you're just trying to figure out how to navigate the, you know, where you're at right now. Um, I guess you're just constantly thinking about who this person is and where they're going. Okay. I did this. So I'm going to turn this way and it's kind of say, well, she, she had to do this and that's why she did this. Kind of a thing so it's an evolving process um theatrically you're in it you know what character you're playing you're you're breaking it down bit by bit before your show even hits the stage so yeah they're just different in different ways yeah yeah for theater shows it's like 80 percent rehearsal 20 percent actually doing the show it's a exactly. lot of work that goes into it so you kind of need to put that time and effort into breaking the script down and knowing the character exactly that's what I love about it I love that chance to get to you don't have to fly by the seat of your pants you know you know who your character is I mean by the time you you hit you hit stage that's that's the coolest part you know and you can really be that person yeah yeah um so we're going to move on to Nashville with the questions now uh what's your favorite storyline that your character had that my character had um I think, I think I, I, I didn't really have my own storyline, but the one that she was heavily involved with again was the one with Cadence when she was a baby. And when she was trying to kind of play that role for Avery, um, the supportive, because Juliet was gone and, you know, in her own land and he was dealing with that. So I was having to be kind of a second mom or an auntie for Cadence. So I think that, that was super fun. Um, yeah, I enjoyed that. Like that's kind of where I'm up to in the current series, and it's like it's nice to see like more of the character instead of all she's the personal assistant who was just here and then she's gone. It's like nice to see her like actually you understand the character, learn more about the character, other than I'm just a personal assistant. Yes, right, exactly. And Emily, yeah, Emily is around so much. You it, for me, I was like it felt natural to kind of explore who she was because she was always there. So I always wanted them to give her a little bit more to work with so people could understand her a little bit better. I've just yeah. came up with a really good question. Oh, and it's ahead. just slipped my mind. <laughs> what backstory <laughs> would you have like chosen for Emily? Ooh. What backstory would I have chosen for Emily? Um, you know what? I had one and I, I, it's been a while. So I've forgotten kind of where she came from. Um, yeah, she 
I feel like she came from a pretty normal family. I think when I, when I started out, I had her going to like Belmont, which is like a musical school here. And they trade, you know, it's, it's a college, um, and they do a lot of music business, um, that side of the industry. So I feel like she would have gone to a place like that. And then just kind of like had this assistant position fall into her lap. Um, but I feel like, I feel like her background, she just came from kind of a normal situation. I, I kind of saw her calling her mom and dad a lot saying, I, you know, I'm in this position, what am I supposed to do? Like seeking advice from them. Um, I don't think I ever imagined her having any siblings. Um, yeah, pretty like a typical upbringing and then thrown into this wild ride of a life that she, she had. <laughs> yeah, I could see that happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your favorite memory from being on set? Um, gosh, there's so many, so many. We, we were lucky enough to shoot, um, on an army base, um, and that was one of the coolest things that I got to do. Um, it's and we were surrounded by our our military, our real life military, and just meeting those folks and and I mean they're they're obviously more stars to me than anybody else. Like they're our heroes, and they sacrifice so much every day. So sh- doing that was was really surreal and cool to just see not only meet them, but like see how things work on the base and, and be around all the equipment and just, um, just show our gratitude to them. That was, that was really fun. Yeah. It was such a beautiful episode. I remember it so well. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. And it had a concert scene, which was awesome too. (laughs) Yeah. Wasn't that the one where Michelle Obama was like guest starring? Was that the one that she... Would I have seen this episode? Yeah, you should have. I think it yeah. might be in season two. Yes, I believe it was later in season two. Yeah. And um and Deacon and Raina performed. And um oh, yeah. Luke was there. Luke was there as well. Yeah. 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 I remember nice. now. I can't remember if that was the Michelle Obama one. I I think it might have been. Yeah. I feel like it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> well, for finished. me for me, it wasn't. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> like even the binge watch, it feels like forever ago because I just got yeah I just get through things that fast yes <laughs> please you got any more questions um do you think Nashville helped increase the popularity of country music like people who may not have listened to it before watched the show and were like you know what this music's actually really good did you steal my article or something because <laughs> I wrote an article about how Nashville like no, introduced I, a lot of people into country music. I don't think I've read that article. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> I to answer your question, I do. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Not only that, I think that it, um, it introduced people to the city of Nashville that had no idea, and they fell in love with it. Um, and I always joke, like everybody that lives here talks about how much we've grown. And I'm, I'm always telling them, yeah, I think my show is a big part of that. We, we, <laughs> we're the problem children that brought all of these people to town. Everybody wanted to move here after the show. Um, cause they saw how cool it was and all the fun, all the fun places. And they just, we got way more, um, tourism and it's grown a lot just because of the show. So not only the music, but everything. Yeah. Well, nice yeah. to hear a show kind of help at certain place increase in like the popularity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's wild what it did. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. The show. I don't is, think they, would, <laughs> they couldn't do that here. I don't think they could ever. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what I'm, he know. knows exactly what I I'm know. talking about. I know. <laughs> now what part, are you all in London? What part of the in the northeast of England, which is like Newcastle, Sunderland, Durham. It's like most people haven't heard of it. It's below Scotland. Okay. Okay. You know what's funny? My husband is actually in Scotland right now. He's on a tour in the UK. Um and was in Scotland. He went to Ireland first and then Scotland and is back for the Buckle and Boots Festival. Oh Um, this festival. (laughs) Yes, there's a but um what is the, I'm forgetting all of a sudden the name of the city. Hold on. I will get it. Um, it's Stockport. 
Manchester it's is a- outside of Manchester. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's right. So there's, yeah, it's a Buckle and Boots. It's a country festival that they have. He played it last year and he's headlining it this year. I'm going to have to add it from my bucket list. I think that might be the the festival Tiger Lily Gold were playing. That's why they were in the UK a few weeks ago. Okay. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Let me look that up now. <laughs> what happens next, I guess this coming weekend, he's there Friday and Saturday. Right. Is the 26th and 27th? Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't yeah. even know there was like festivals like that here. I knew there was like one in London once a year that does like country music and then also they do kind of a vocal group kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, from he's he's loving it there and loving like helping develop develop it because I know that a lot of people are trying to bring more country music there. So I'm glad, Lola, that you said that because I think it's I think it's evolving around you all. I really yeah. hope so because he's yeah. really trying to spend more time there. Yeah. It's just like there's a lot of beautiful cities and like architecture. The seaside up here is like award winning. It's like the I think it's mm-hmm. the best in the country, if I'm not wrong. And a lot of people just don't really get to see that. So yeah. That's wonderful. I mean, the will in my music video because I did shoot at the beach. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. Where I, I would love to get over there with him the next time he comes. Next time he's over there, I think maybe in November, November or March of next year, we'll see. But I'd love to come over. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Hopefully, I'll I'll have a trek across to wherever. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Have to meet up with y'all. Yeah. Yeah. That would be fun. Is he um, what was it like working with Hayden Panettiere? It was awesome. She's she's no nonsense. She's a New Yorker, so she's got that like I'm going to tell it like it is attitude. Um, but she was always so kind to me. Um, and so sweet to me. Um, and just yeah, just very supportive and fun you know I mean we all have our we all have our days when it's more difficult than others but um overall it it was it it felt very natural to to be around her and and um at first obviously being such a huge fan of hers it was intimidating but it needed to be I mean when it when Emily began her her career in that pilot episode she was I think new to the whole thing with Juliet and um so that intimidation kind of played into that, but off screen, it was never, it was never like that. She did. She was not that kind of a, that person that Juliet was. So yeah, <laughs> she, she's always been lovely to me. Yeah. Oh, it's nice to hear because uh, just how intense Juliet was, I was thinking Hayden must just like be put a hundred percent into this character. <laughs> she's just she's amazing and she's so underrated as an actor she really is I mean I would sit and watch her scene sometimes and just go I can't believe more people don't don't understand that I mean obviously she's a she's a big star so obviously she they people know her for her talent but I think she's underrated she's very very talented and good at what she does so it was it was awesome to just watch and learn from her that's so sweet. That is. Really it is, is. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's all the questions I've got. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will just play some country music as an outro, but no. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> yeah, um, let's hear you. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 I got myself in it. I, I decided to just do some deco on the oh, back. I love of it. it. I just left it, though. I just. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> You gotta make this, it your own. Yeah, this is like the first time anybody's actually gonna hear this song, so I'm probably gonna end up having to cut it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I left my boots in Oklahoma, caught a rain at sunset, nothing keeps on me. No one knows what Touching from the wild side, found it well. You don't take it on. I don't make it on my own. Couple maps on my phone. These journeys are good for you. 
so and then a small foot very good very nice thank you I love your voice really like I've been so scared to sing for so many years because people used to just make us sing to mock us oh no believe in yourself and keep going don't don't lose that um don't lose that trust in yourself trust and 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 just make it strong don't uh, don't doubt yourself because that will show and that will, you'll hear that doubt so just have faith in yourself you're doing great that's awesome thank you yeah it means a lot yeah. of course all right so i guess we should let you get on with your day because it's very <laughs> it's like later yeah it's like seven yeah, yeah 30 minutes past say, seven you're about six hours ahead of me. Yeah, it's about 1.15. I've got, yeah, I've got a few things to do. And then my kids are getting out of school. So <laughs> almost done with our, our school year here. Oh, so, wow. Wait, yeah. I was just like two months, I think. Another two months. Is it? Yeah. So June, July-ish. No, it's, yeah. it's, oh, wow. it's mid-July, I think. Mid-July. Oh, yeah. Okay. We get done in May here, and then um, we'll be on tour with my my husband for most of the summer. We go out to the West Coast with him, so you know, it's exciting. <laughs> Something to look that forward just to. That sounds so good. It is, yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's a lot to live on a tour bus with a bunch of guys and kids, and we take our dogs, and it's it's a lot, but it's definitely fun. So <laughs> yeah, you'll get to see the sights and everything. Yeah, exactly. Like that, so yeah, I get to go to a lot of places that I haven't been yet, so it's super fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. like my dream. I think. Yeah. Road trip, <laughs> literally. Definitely, literally yeah. road trip. <laughs> yeah. Well, just keep working towards it. You'll get there. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Just see it. Yeah. See it in your brain, and it'll happen. Right. Thank you so much for this. Yep. Thank, thank you, you for thank you. you. Absolutely. If you all need anything else, just let me know. I'm. I don't mind talking to you anytime, and hopefully, I get over to see you. Yeah, that'd be so yeah. cool. It would be. Yeah. Thanks for being such huge fans of the show. I appreciate it. You're welcome. We can't Thank not you. be. <laughs> I know. It's so good. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all take care. And you. Have a great and day. And you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.